Welcome to the glass working shop. Well, progress is being made and success is happening. The uh, CNC polar thingy that I don't have a name for yet. At one time I thought about calling it a stringer puller, but it, it, it actually has probably more uses than that. So I'm still trying to figure out a name for it, but uh, preliminary testing has been ongoing. I've been doing a lot of polls with it, and boy, it, it seems to be working. There's some, some mysteries that have come up that I didn't quite understand. There's uh, getting it all configured and dialed in is, is different. I expected it to be tricky, but it's tricky in a different way than I expected. So here's today's progress update. So probably the first thing to show is that I've got a, a new uh, controller case and panel. And I've also been working on the user interface display and the overall software configuration. Uh, the processor is an ARM microprocessor, an ARM microcontroller uh, on a custom circuit board that I designed and uh, wrote all the software for. So I think in the last uh, video I had the kind of a rude crude prototype on a piece of wood and now it's in an ice box. So um, I've added here on the, the torch head, I've added cooling nozzles connected to a needle valve and connected to a compressed air source because it's really important to manage the heated and cooled area. It's especially when pulling uh, small diameter results, it can be really tricky if the glass stays too hot. And controlling the balance between heating and cooling really is the key to making the thing work. So, let's go up to a wide shot here and I'll show some information about how the thing starts up. Because it's, uh, because the, uh, the machine is operated by stepper motors without encoders, it's basically open loop control, open loop stepper motors. There's no encoders, uh, there's no position measurement. It doesn't know what position it's in when it starts. I put in a homing routine together with limit switches at the top and the bottom so that so that the machine can very very slowly got to do it slowly to avoid overshooting but it's moving down hit the lower limit and then moving up and then when it reaches the top it will automatically move to the load position here we go going down into position for loading so everything is now ready to go and I'm going to reconfigure the camera a little, put the didymium filter on and get ready for some fire. Yeah, I guess I missed a step. Before turning on the fire, I need to configure everything and I start out by taking the color rod that I'm going to use and measure it with a caliper and the rod isn't round so I try to come up with I don't know what's the what's the average diameter then go into setup 
and I'm going to be pulling a 1.8 millimeter result from a 6.9 millimeter rod then put it back into manual mode put the rod in the lower chuck and now I'm ready for fire going to light up the torch One of the things that kind of surprised me about this project was how tiny of a flame was necessary to actually get a, a decent result. So I'm going to bring the, the puller down into the flame. And kind of heat up the end. I got to get it hot enough to stick. This uh, setup, startup process, is the part of the process that isn't automated. This kind of requires skill and knowledge. So now I'm heating the, the rod, going to stick it into position, then I'm going to push run, and I'm going to start off one millimeter per second, and then slowly ramp up to four millimeters per second and I'm looking at the result when I first start the first inch or so isn't really that good it takes a while to stabilize the first say two inches is way too thin but now I'm starting to get a very uniform result I've, uh, I've pulled, I don't know, 20 or 30 of these little uh, 1.8 millimeter rods and the results are excellent. Some of them come out 1.80 uh, and others are very, very close within a fraction of a millimeter. So what we can see here is a very tiny flame that is heating the rod um, an air blast coming through these uh, the top nozzles that is cooling the rod right at the uh, at the appropriate place. The failure mode that I noticed during development is if too much hot glass continues upward for too long because of course heat rises and if I didn't have the nozzles aimed correctly and if I had too much flame and if I didn't have the cooling jet when trying to pull a small result it would end up getting too thin and break off and so anyway I went through many 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 cycles of too thin broke off too thin broke off until finally achieving a uh, consistent result now, just a, a bit of uh, commentary on the, you know, why am I doing this? What is the reason for this machine? And is it accomplishing what I set out to do? Well, first of all, it's not a production machine. It's not designed to speed up the manufacture of glass rods. It's running at four millimeters per second, which is pretty slow. Um, who knows, maybe with some tweaking and adjustment and a little bit of more cleverness, maybe I can make it run faster, but one thing that I've discovered in the process of, of going through this, that the faster I try to run it, the, the, the trickier the setup becomes, the, the trickier the balance becomes. Um, the purpose of the machine is to make accurate rods, much more accurate than I can do by hand. Um, and maybe that's just saying something about my hand skills, but I, I'm a machinist, I like precision, and I designed this so that I can have accurate diameters that I can then assemble into vac stacks for things like uh, uh, various different color combinations where I want every rod to be the same size. So. Anyway, it's working. It's working exceptionally well. The, uh, the setup 
it, it, now that I've gotten used to it, it's not as bad as I thought it would be. And the variation between color rods is not as much as I thought it would be. I'm pulling pretty much every color in my stock with almost the same setup once I get it dialed in for one rod. So I'm nearing the end here, and when it reaches the top, it goes back into manual mode, stops pulling, and then I just manually pull the bottom down a little. Get it to break off. Cut the result. And then after cutting the result, I can press the manual button and hold it in position and the top chuck returns into the load position ready to do the next rod. That's pretty much the end of today's video, the progress update on this uh, current invention. As always, thank you for watching. It's been fun.